Hey guys, this is just a semi-short tutorial on Fusion 360. I'm getting ready to make a couple of pieces for a backyard game that we play. Um, the old components have gotten worn out um, or broken, so I'm going to make some new ones. Um, it's just a simple uh, disc, kind of like a ring disc. Uh, it's for a game, it's almost like a, a ring toss game that we play. So anyway, I'm going to do this in Fusion 360. And uh, it's fairly, fairly easy, but I just wanted to, I thought it'd be a good time to share a little bit of knowledge about Fusion. I'm not an expert at it. Um, I've only been using it for a few months. But uh, here we go. So to start things off, this is just the main startup here. Uh, I'm going to create a new sketch. And then I'm going to pick the bottom plane. Now these are rings, so we're going to be using the circle tool mostly. Um, holding down the scroll wheel and dragging it around will move <coughs> your canvas. I guess it'd be called a canvas. Um, so to start out, I'm going to go to sketch, and we're going to do a circle, and we're going to do a center diameter circle so we can draw right off the that center diameter right there. So I'm going to pick this um, center origin, uh, left click and then drag out and the way I like to do it is just drag it out and just click anywhere and then I like to hit D on the keyboard which is dimension and then drag out here and then you can change the diameter here and I know I need an 8 inch diameter so just type in 8 and hit enter and then your scroll wheel in and out will zoom in it's kind of backwards uh, scrolling up scrolls you out or zooms out <coughs> All right, and then uh, the next thing I got to do is make the inner part of the ring, and this ring has a between the center and or between the the cutout in the middle and the outside has a 1.5 inch thickness. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll create another circle, and this will be the same thing, center diameter, and I'll click there and drag out, and then a little bit of math, we got eight inches. We need 1.5, so that would be a six and a half inch circle. Let's see if that makes sense. Maybe my math's way off. Yeah, my math's off, I think. So we need an inch and a half on each side, three, so it'd be, I guess it would be a five inch circle. So you can double click that dimension and just change it to five. That looks more like it. And then just to see, I want to see, that's a, f yeah, five inch there. So we'll escape. And then I want to see what's between here and here. Oops, dimension. I'll go here to here. Yeah, 1.5 all the way around. So that's good. And then I just said that because I was trying to do something I couldn't do. And then I like to just delete the dimensions so they're not in my way. All right, so we're good there, so I'm gonna stop the sketch. And then what I will do is go to Create, and then we're gonna Extrude. I only wanna extrude this outer ring, so we'll just click that face. And then you can drag it up and down, or you can just type it in right here. Uh, I know that the material I'm using, I'm actually using a piece of, piece of uh, plexiglass, acrylic, whatever you wanna call it. Um, I know that it's an eighth of an inch, so that is 0.125 and then just hit enter so now I have this piece <clears throat> and again you can use the scroll wheel hold it down and drag around and you can also hold shift on the scroll wheel and kind of rotate things how you want to see them anyway so that's that part now we're gonna go in and actually make the the piece uh, in the cam software so I can run it on the CNC so I'll go into this and I'm going to do, the first thing I always do is switch this to inches so it doesn't mess anything up. Then we're going to go to a new setup and then it shows this material. Um, I'm going to make it a little bit, I some people use a different kind of orientation or a different kind of stock orientation or mode. I like to use the fixed size box. And then what that is, 
let's see, let's rotate this. See how it puts it into a fixed piece of stock. So what I want to do is change that to the material that I'm using and we'll go nine by nine. And then the Z depth, I'm going to make it exactly what the thickness of my material is. Easy enough. So now you see when it cuts it out, it'll cut it out right on the right on the actual material. Okay, let's see. I think there might have been a few more things I needed to do in here. Um, it's milling, stock bot. We want the origin over here on the corner. So that's good. You just click on the top, that node or whatever you want to call it. The stock was good. Post process, I usually don't mess with too much. So the thing we're going to do now is a. You can do, uh, like where it would actually like cut out the whole pocket, like remove all the material. But I think the easier thing to do is the 2D contour. And what we'll do is we'll pick the bottom ring here, and the bottom ring here, and then we'll pick the uh, tool setup and then what I use is I go down to the aluminum settings I think I went too far I see here is this sample inches aluminum and I use an eighth inch uh, flat end mill so I'll just pick that and it really doesn't matter it's thin material so the depth of the bit and everything doesn't really matter you don't need the coolant on so you can turn that off um, I will set this a little bit faster on all of these, and that's usually what I run with, so it shouldn't be a problem. Um, tabs, obviously we want to put tabs in, that's way too many, uh, so we'll go, it'll work three inches on the tab distance, and as you can see, that's where it places the tabs. So that's good. Uh, all of this other stuff I don't need to worry about for what I'm doing here. We'll go to the heights. Um, this isn't ideal, but uh, it'll work. Okay, as far as the passes, uh, we want to go multiple depths. So we'll minimize that. Multiple depths. This is how much it will cut at one time, how deep it will go. <clears throat> and I always like to set that up a little bit higher. Let's see, we're going 0.125, so we don't want it to cut it all at once. So we'll go 0.0625, so half of that. And that should be good. And then the last thing I'll do is on the linking is just keep tool down and that means every pass it won't raise back up it'll just continue going down other than that it should be okay and then it has to load up here and then it shows the <clears throat> everything that's going on it shows this tool so now all we need to do is do a simulation make sure we're happy with it uh, I'll turn on the stock so we can see it cut from the stock and we'll use wall paint so here's what it will do. All right, simple enough. The toolpath look, looks good to me. It is doing two, two passes to get to that uh, eighth inch depth. It's leaving the tabs in, as you can see. So I'm happy with that. So to export it or get the G code you need, I'm going to go to post process and then everything for me is set. So I will just call this disc game and you might have to configure this differently for your CNC. I don't know, but this is what works for mine with that uh, .nc extension. Title it hit post and
save. And you'll see that it generates this. And that's just the G code that will run to the CNC. Again, pretty simple cut, but yeah, easy enough.